IPPK49. So today we'll talk a little bit about how we can collect data with the accelerometer and the microcontroller, how to send this data to the computer. We can also plot it live on the computer, but also how to log it on a micro SD, just in case we don't wanna work with a computer and if you wanna be a little bit more flexible. So let's just immediately start. I'll turn on my camera here. So the three things or the four things actually that we need today is our microcontroller again, we need the accelerometer, then we can connect those two things with a quick cable. And then we again need our cable that we can connect the microcontroller with our computer. So I'll also share my screen here so that we can start and that you guys can see what I'm doing here. If you guys have already downloaded the library for the accelerometer, like explained in the lab manual and the Spark Fun tutorial, you should find if you go on file and then on examples, you should find this here. It's a Spark Fun MMA 8452Q accelerometer library. And in this library, we have a lot of different codes. So these codes are pre written codes that you can use with the accelerometer um, and you don't have to write anything anymore. So um, for our example, we'll just start with the basic reading here. So with the basic reading, you can really just um, collect the data on the accelerometer and you don't have to change anything. And, and that's basically it. So I'm not gonna go into detail with this code, um, but let's just talk a little bit about what the authors did here, the authors of this code. Um, so, they included two different libraries. This is important because one of the libraries is the library um, of the accelerometer. So this includes functions that can get the data from the accelerometer. And the second library is a library that you need to connect the or to yeah to connect the microcontroller with the accelerometer with this quick cable. So this is a specific library for this specific connection between those two. In the setup function, we started the communication between the microcontroller with the computer. So that's a serial communication we talked about in the last tutorial with a baud rate of 9,600. So we really have to focus or re re we really have to be careful that our serial monitor will have a baud rate of 9,602 so that the communication will work. Um, then they print something. It's just like a random text, which basically just lets us know what, um, what will happen in this code now. And then they had to start another communication, which in this case is the communication between the microcontroller and the accelerometer. So that's what you do with this code here. And if something with the connection doesn't really work, then it will let you know in the, opera, then it will let you know in the serial monitor with not connected, please check connections and read the hookup guide. And then in the loop, it's basically just always looking if there is data available and if yes, then it prints the, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So that's basically everything that happens in this code. So let's now try it out with our microcontroller. So first we have to take the quick cable and connect it with the microcontroller. And then we can connect the accelerometer with the quick cable too. So it does not matter in which direction the quick cable is going into the microcontroller or the accelerometer, and it also doesn't matter where at the accelerometer the quick cable goes. So it's really just a connection, and you can also afterwards you can connect other devices here. So it's like a really cool system to connect a lot of um, a lot of systems with each other and with the microcontroller. And then we can connect the microcontroller with the computer. It starts to light up. And we finally can upload our sketch to the microcontroller. This error is coming because we didn't specify which port we're using for the microcontroller. So we go to tools, we go to port, and here we have to specify um, where the microcontroller or the USB drive is connected to the computer. In my case, this is this one. We talked about this in the last, um, in the last video. So let's try that again now. It's uploading and that worked. Cool. So now what we can do, we can actually open our serial monitor. We have the right baud rate and we can see 
that everything is working. So it's like data for X axis, data for Y axis and data for Z axis. But what I usually do, which is actually a little bit cooler for like live data is if you go to, um, I think it's a tools, yeah. Then you open a serial plotter and then you can actually see the data being plotted live. So if I turn the micro, uh, the, sorry, the accelerometer now, you can see that the data is changing live. So you can try that out and you can test immediately if your system is working. Cool, let's close that. So if you want to save your data now, you can open the serial monitor and just let it work. I usually also clear the output here so that everything is, is fresh, the data is fresher. And then you can just hold the accelerometer into one direction for a few seconds. You can turn it into the opposite direction. And you can do this with all the directions, always try to hold it for a few seconds that it's um, that you can afterwards look if the one sheet down actually works like it should. Like this and like this and so on. And then you can just disconnect the microcontroller can disconnect the microcontroller. You can copy and paste this. I usually then open a text file, a new document. I just paste it in there. And since, for example, you have like not the full data here, you can either delete it or leave it, whatever you prefer. And then you can just save it. And that's your text file that you can afterwards. Um, analyze in Python, save it, that's it. What I usually always do is, I'm not sure if that's the same on Windows, but if you go to, um, if, if you use an, a MacBook, um, I usually also make it a plain text because otherwise it's some like specific MacBook um, formatting that we don't want here. And then you can just close it, it will be saved and that's what, we'll, what we will um, analyze afterwards in Python. Sorry for the change in environment. I had to change my location before proceeding with the video. So now we'll work on um, the same that we just did, collecting the acceleration data. But now instead of connecting it to the computer, we will actually log it onto the micro SD. So let's just immediately start. What do we need for this? We need a nine volt battery to power the whole system. We need the adapter that we can connect to the microcontroller and that can also um, connect with the battery. And then we need our open log device where we can put in the micro SD. And obviously then we need our micro SD and we need a microcontroller. So if you have already downloaded the library for the open log, like explained in the SparkFun tutorial, you can now go to file, examples, and then you should have this library here, the SparkFun quick open log library, again, with a lot of different examples like we already had before with the accelerometer. So we will start with trying the writing log first, since this is the first example, and it uh, it will show us if everything is working well. Let's open this. So let's quickly talk about the important part here in the code. Again, we have the library here for the connection with the quick cable. So as, as explained before, whenever we wanna connect two of those devices with a quick cable, we need this library um, that they can communicate. Then we need a library for the open log itself. That's the same as we did before with the accelerometer. And then in the setup function, we now have to start three different communications. This is the communication for the quick cable. So that's the communication between the open log device and the microcontroller. This here is the communication with the open log, so with the micro SD. And this here is the communication with the serial monitor at the computer. So we need this now because in this experiment or in this example, we will still connect with the computer and get some things in the serial monitor. Like for example, this sentence here. So this will be shown in the serial monitor later. So, and then there are a few things that happen once. So we get this sentence here in the, in the serial monitor. We get this here um, locked at the micro SD. We get this here again at the serial monitor. And then we get this here um, at the micro SD again. 
and something else on a micro SD. And then this is just to sync the file um, at the micro SD. And then once this happened, we will get another done at the serial monitor. And just because it's fun, they also put like a blinking LED in the loop function. So which means that whenever all of this here is done, then our LED at the microcontroller will start to blink. So let's see now if that works. First, we'll have to put the battery into the battery holder. Hope that you can all see that. Battery holder. We can also put the micro SD into the open log. We can connect the open log with the microcontroller. And then I have to grab the connection to the computer. One moment. Here we go. I'm back with the cable. Connect this to the USB. Then we connect this to the microcontroller because we first need to upload the file to the microcontroller. And let's upload it. We probably will get an error again. No, we don't get an error. So it already automatically knows which USB um, connection at the computer it's using. That's good. It's uploading. The uploading is done. And now we can actually open our serial monitor, see what happens. Tuck, and everything is done. So now, just to show you guys something, if we click the reset button now, it will do that again. And if we click the reset button again, it will do it again. So let's now check if everything worked with the micro SD. So if we, uh, we can close this here, we can disconnect our microcontroller, take our micro SD, and now you guys should all have um, some device where you can connect the micro SD with your computer. If you don't have that at home, you'll probably have to order an Amazon or buy it somewhere um, in any electronic store so that you can connect the micro SD with your computer. In my case, I have an adapter here that's directly connected to the computer. It's in there. Okay, let's see. It should show up. Here, untitled, this log file here, and there we go. If we click on the on the text file, we have three times since, like one, two, three, four times since I clicked the reset button three times, we have it once initially, and then I click the reset button, it did it again, I click the reset button, it did it again, and I click the reset button, and it did it again. Just as an additional info, um, we have realized that sometimes this code isn't perfectly working when you just connect it to the power or uh, to the USB cable. Um, one possible solution for that is if you realize that it's not locking onto the micro SD, if you click on the reset button, this usually resolves the problem, then the code starts and then it will save the data on the micro SD. So let's now try something else. Let's put the micro SD in our um, open log again, and now let's just connect it with the battery here, okay? So we can connect this here, and then once we connect this, again, the code will start immediately and then upload the file onto the micro SD. Since the um, LED is lighting, we know that it, it worked. We can disconnect the power here again, take micro SD, connect it with our computer, Open it, look here. Okay, so I guess since you can see now, um, it's empty, even though the LED was already lighting, it's empty, something did not work with the connection with the micro SD. So as I explained before, we will try the same now. Let's delete it here. Um, we'll try the same now, but I'll click the reset button, okay? Okay, let's connect the micro SD with the open log again. Connect the battery with the microcontroller to let it start. 
it's blinking, that means it's done. But as we saw before, it didn't work. It did not log anything to the microSD. So if we click the reset button, starts again. Let's see if that works now. The microSD, connect it with the computer. See how that worked. Now it worked. So in a lot of cases, we have to click the reset button. So my suggestion here is whenever you want to collect some important data with the microSD, always click the reset button in the very beginning that it for sure will work. So let's now try the second example of the open log um, library. Let's go to file, example, spark fun quick open log library and then let's open the example to append file so here we will see that we uh, can also create our own file we can name it so like here one is created append me and the other one is called append me one so we can create this with the code mylog.append and what it will do here is it will give you some information in the serial monitor that is starting the test then it will create a file with without a name. Afterwards, it will create a file with the name append me, and then it will create the name uh, a file with the name append me one, and then we'll see in the in the serial monitor done again. So if we connect our microcontroller now to the computer, and we upload the file. Now we can also connect our microSD, connect the microSD, and open the serial monitor. It does the test, it's done, that's it. If we click the reset button, it does the same again. So it should have created three files, one that we didn't name, so it's like a log uh, file, then one append me, and then one append me one, okay? Something else that I would like to show you is the LEDs on the back, let's see if you can see that. The LED is on the back of the open log. So here's the red light that just means that it has power. And then there's a second green LED that is always blinking when data is locked to the microSD. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on this camera now, but if I click here on the reset button again, it's flashing very lightly a few, a few times. It's flashing so lightly because that's very fast but you can see it with your eyes in, in real life. Um, if you're not sure if something is logging, you can always use this LED as an indication if your system is working and if there is data being logged onto the microSD. So it's very helpful if you're not using the serial monitor and you're not sure if, if, the, if it's actually working. So let's now check out what we have on our microSD. I'm disconnecting the microcontroller. I take the microSD connected to the computer. And then let's see what we got here. With one append me file, obviously um, a lot of things happened here because we did it not just once, we did it a few times. We have another append me one. And this is the random log file that it always creates um, when you don't give it a name. So we can do the same now with the with the battery, but essentially that's exactly the same. You just don't connect it with the computer. You just connect it with the microcontroller. Um, you might have to click the reset button once. You can't see anything on the serial monitor then, obviously, because you're not connected to the computer, but it will um, save the same things on the micro SD as before. And lastly, we can combine what we learned from the accelerometer data collection with the data logging at the microSD. So we, once we combine those two things, we actually don't need the computer anymore to log our data on the serial monitor. We can actually then um, log our data on the microSD and just go outside and be away from the computer for any data collection that we want. So for this, let's just open the example of the accelerometer that we used before. So we go to file, example, accelerometer, and then example one, basic reading. So now, what, now we need to combine 
the example one from the accelerometer with example two from the open log library. So what do we already have here? Like we talked about that before. So we have the, um, the wire library, which is basically the library for us to, co to communicate between the microcontroller and the devices afterwards with the quick cable. We already have the library for the accelerometer, which we need to connect later. And then we also need to add the library of the open log device. We also need to copy and paste this since, since we don't have it. So this here, I didn't explain it before. This here is basically just the open log is the library that we are using. So um, when we say open log is the my log, then we just need to write here my log to let the um, code know that the begin function or the append function is from the open log library. We could potentially also just say open log here, but it's just a little bit easier that we can call it whatever we want. Um, like for example, on this side with the accelerometer, we have the same here. Like we, we say that we want to use this library or this, yeah, this library and call it Excel. So then we use the Excel here. Um, we could also just use this here, but it's just a little bit easier um, to using the Excel here. Um, so we've added this here. Since we are not uh, communicating with the serial monitor, we can uncomment this. Sorry, we can comment this that it's that we don't use it anymore. Um, we are starting a communication with uh, uh, the quick cable. We also need to start the communication with our um, open lock device. And then this here basically just looks if um, the accelerometer um, is connected. So if, if the connection with the accelerometer is working, and if not, it's printing that's not connected in our serial monitor. So we can change this here to my log that it will print in the, my, at the micro SD that something here is not working. And then, we can create a file here with the append function. We can create a file, let's call it Excel data. Um, in the end, let's also sync the file. And then this is still communicating with the serial monitor. So let's just change this here to communicate with um, the open log or the micro SD. And I really like to have the time as well. So right now we have um, the x-axis data, a space, the y-axis data, a space, the z-axis data. So let's just add another space here. And then let's add um, information about the time in milliseconds from when we started um, the code. Let's see if that's working here. That looks good. Okay, so now we can connect this to our micro SD, uh, sorry, to our microcontroller and upload this code to our microcontroller. That's done. So it's disconnected again. Now we can also connect our accelerometer to the system. So we can connect it here to the um, open lock device. It does not matter if the accelerometer is last or second. So the order of those devices does not matter at all. Okay. Let's also put the micro SD into the open lock. And now we can connect it with the battery and it will start logging. Just to be safe, let's also click the reset button. And now if we check here, you can't see it, but I can see it. The green LED is lighting up very lightly, which means that it's flashing very fast, which means it's logging the data very fast onto the micro SD. So we can disconnect it now. And then let's take the micro SD, connect it with our computer. I'm putting it into my adapter and connect it with the computer. And now we can actually check we have the data, and there we go. XX, oh, let's open it. 
x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, and that's the time in milliseconds. That's it for today. Today we learned how to use an accelerometer with a microcontroller to measure accelerations. We also learned how to log data to a microSD, and in the end we combined those two systems. This is super helpful whenever you don't wanna be connected to a computer and you wanna do some measurements in the field. So you can use those two systems, combine them, go into the field, measure with a very small system, and in the end you can have a look at the system at the computer, but you don't need the computer with you whenever you do those um, data collections. With this, we're done for today. I hope that you'll have a lot of fun with the data collection and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.